Some people say we need to go searching if we are to find the holy way and the holy one. Others claim God is right there before our eyes and right here within our hearts. Maybe it just takes some intention and some paying attention for the invisible to become visible. Scripture says, for nothing is hidden except to be made manifest, nor is anything secret except to come to light. In this Lenten time of lengthening days, may we open ourselves to the signs and wonders around and within. May we emerge from the darker places and the darker parts of our lives, confessing our sins and returning toward God's way. May we know our lives and our life together to contain common encounters which reflect celestial light. Let us pray. Loving God, we come here on the Day of Palms to honor your entrance into the city, your entrance into our lives. But we confess our capricious discipleship. Like the people of ancient Jerusalem, our faith can be turned to cynicism. Like the disciples in Holy Week, we often make decisions out of fear, self-interest, or expedience. Remind us of the humility you embraced as you entered our lives. Remind us of the prayerful, faithful people we still can be. Through your strength and gentleness, create in us the heart of faith so that we may live the blessing you have shown us. Amen. He From Psalm 118, we hear these words. In my distress, I called to the Lord who answered me and set me free. The Lord is with me. I will not be afraid. What can anyone do to me? It is the Lord who helps me. Give thanks to the Lord because God is good and God's love is eternal. Our sins are forgiven.
the story we are about to tell is the story of a king. He's not the kind of king that people thought he would be. The king had no army, no great house, and no riches. Some people would say that this person was not a king, but he was important as a king. He spoke of a kingdom that was not like any kingdom that people had ever lived in. It was not like any kingdom that people had ever visited. It was not like any kingdom that people had ever heard of. People began to follow him. They just couldn't help themselves. Imagine what it's like to be a stone, a small hard stone lying in the dust in the middle of a dirt road. When people travel, they kick dust in the face of a stone. When carts carry grain to market, they roll on top of stones without a thought. Micah Ben Felsbar was such a stone. He lived on the road just outside of Jerusalem. He was complaining to the pebbles lying beside him. People walk all over us. This road would be dust and mud without us. But folks just kick us out of the way as if we didn't even matter. Sandy Stone landed on the road beside Micah one day and she said, Maybe people can't hear us when we talk to them. Or else they just don't pay attention to pebbles and stones. As the sun rose and the day got hotter, the stones and pebbles could feel a distant rumbling in the ground. They asked each other, what's going on? What's happening? It feels like a parade is coming. Or a caravan of camels. Here they come. It is a parade. The people are waving palm branches. Listen to them sing and cheer. I can see somebody on a donkey. People are cheering for him. The next thing Micah knew, a palm branch landed right on top of him. But Sandy didn't notice. She was too busy shouting. It must be a king. Hosanna. Hosanna. Micah, who was still underneath a palm branch, was grumbling. The parade walked right over top of him. The little donkey carrying the king stepped carefully over the singing stones. As the parade passed by, Micah peeked out from under his branch. Look at his face. I think he looks very kind. I bet he can hear the voices of the stones. So the stones and pebbles cried even louder. Hosanna! 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 As all the stones and pebbles watched the parade go by, the whole multitude of disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power they had seen. They said, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Suddenly they heard an angry person try to stop the shouting by saying, Silence your disciples. The king replied, I tell you, if these people were silent, the very stones would cry out. He did hear us. He heard our shouts. I wonder what people were looking for when they lined the streets of Jerusalem 2,000 years ago. What did they hope Jesus could offer them? What had they seen in him, his actions and teaching, that was good for life? And I wonder also what people are looking for today. With all we are carrying from a year under pandemic shifts, what do we hope Jesus could offer us? This pandemic has generated people who are fearful that things are not going to get any better. 
This Palm Sunday sees people yearning for hope. Marissa G. Frank is a psychologist and friendship expert. She writes, isolation can dull your mood. We're missing something called the amplification effect. The idea that when we're around other humans, our emotions intensify both positively and negatively. When we're not around people in the same way, we're not getting the amplification of our emotions. We're in a state of constantly feeling blah. This pandemic has generated people who feel flat, dull, and uninteresting. This Palm Sunday sees people yearning for inspiration. Healthcare workers have been particularly affected by stress. They are at risk to develop symptoms common to crisis situations like burnout and exhaustion. This pandemic has generated people who are exhausted, working all the time without the opportunity to replenish their strength. This Palm Sunday sees people yearning for rest. Our first contact in life is essentially the hug. Newborn babies are constantly cuddled, nursed, and cradled. Caring human contact lowers stress, builds bonds, increases happiness, and general well being. This pandemic has generated people who are missing hugging those they love. This Palm Sunday sees people yearning for touch. Young adults have seen their lives put on hold. They can't build careers, families, connections or relationships. And they are asked to sit and wait, wait, wait. This pandemic has generated people who have been feeling so useless unneeded, stalled, and trapped. This Palm Sunday sees people yearning for freedom. Stress is a part of life. We need it to navigate dangerous situations. We need it to focus things for us. Our bodies release adrenaline and cortisol to help prepare us to address immediate troubles and challenges. But chronic stress that is ongoing leaves us nervous, edgy, jumpy, with nowhere to go. This pandemic has generated people who are full of worry about their situation and their future. This Palm Sunday sees people who are yearning for peace. One of the surprising gifts of this time is that more people are volunteering all around the globe, helping neighbors and communities. This pandemic has generated people who want to be able to do something for someone else. This Palm Sunday sees people yearning for invitation. Guilt has been powerful in these times. People feel guilty for doing well when others are not, guilty for not doing well, guilty for getting sick or giving COVID to someone else, guilty for avoiding friends, family, even when that is what we've been asked to do. This pandemic has generated people who feel guilty and self-centered sometimes. This Palm Sunday sees people who are yearning for forgiveness. We have heard news reports of those who have survived COVID only to be faced with ongoing symptoms and struggles related to the illness. This pandemic has generated people whose lives and health has changed for the long term. 
This Palm Sunday sees people yearning for healing. And then there are those who have died. 22,000 in Canada, 2.7 million around the world. People who were creative, connected, needed and loved. This pandemic has generated people who are walking with grief. This Palm Sunday sees people who are yearning for solace. The suffering due to COVID has not been equal, but has been borne more, more heavily by the poor, the elderly and communities of color. This pandemic has generated people that long for a world that is more fair. This Palm Sunday sees people yearning for justice. Some families have been able to use this opportunity to improve relationships between their family members. However, increased family interaction can also result in more conflict which has led to an increase in people seeking divorce. This pandemic has generated people whose relationships are strained and breaking under pressure. This Palm Sunday sees people yearning for calm. As travel slowed and tourism ebbed away, the air, the water, and the wild creatures started to show signs of recovery and health. This pandemic has generated people who are newly aware of the danger of our caustic habits on the living world. This Palm Sunday sees people yearning for change. This pandemic has generated people who have a new respect and appreciation for gardens, nature, and wild places. This Palm Sunday sees people yearning to wonder. This pandemic has generated people who are learning that there is a difference between being alone and being lonely. This Palm Sunday sees people yearning for insight. This pandemic has generated people who have stories of loss and learning, stories of resilience and struggle, stories of birth and death and everything that lies between them. This Palm Sunday has people yearning for story. The story of God with us through all this amazing, challenging, tumultuous, and miraculous life. We come to Jesus yearning for these things because we have seen them in the life he brought. Hope, inspiration, rest, touch, freedom, peace, invitation, forgiveness, healing, solace, justice, calm, change, wonder, insight, and story. In Jesus, people saw so many possibilities for blessings in their lives. We see these blessings too. And together with the stones, we call out our joy in the living God, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna.
Good morning. Please join with me in prayer. Holy One, we remember on this Palm Sunday that Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey, proclaiming your kingdom of justice, love, and forgiveness. Our scripture tells the story of a servant God and reminds us that you come to meet us in humble ways. In the lengthening of the afternoon twilight into moonlit evenings, in the fragrance of the earth in our gardens, in delicate pink cherry blossoms, in the first bee or robin we see. In this COVID year, we are looking for little signs of new life, not passing them by, but stopping and giving thanks for your presence in the simple beauty of our world. Your holy presence is all around us. We thank you for this congregation gathered in worship and the way you continue to shape us into a loving, supportive community, reaching out to those in need. We are blessed by gracious and faithful ministry. We are grateful that we see congregation and community members receiving their vaccinations, as this is a sign that we will be able to be together again in person. Help us to be more selfless, to share love with our family and friends, to be kind to those we encounter in our communities, and to give generously to the wider world. Help us to remember those who have so much less, those who are homeless, those who suffer illness, loneliness, and despair. Help us respond with justice when we see hatred toward anyone because of race, ethnicity, or gender identity. Within our prayer cycle in the Pacific Mountain region, we pray for the ministries and congregations of St. David's United Church in Pemberton, St. David's United Church in West Vancouver, St. George's United Church in Courtney, and St. John Galbert Shared Ministry in Port McNeil. And we pray for all faith groups as they prepare for their own holy days in this season. We ask that all political leaders not be tempted by power, but led by justice and humility. May those with great financial resources be generous in giving. May those with power over vulnerable people offer dignity, care, and hope. Each one of us is tempted in our own life. May we each do what is kind, just, and humble. In this moment of silence, we meet you at our own crossroads to listen to your voice and to offer our own private prayers. Holy One, thank you that you don't just show us the way, you are the way, and you empower us to follow you. Together we follow you with Hosanna in our hearts as we offer the prayer that Jesus taught. Our loving God in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Before we join together in our sun blessing, I'd like to leave you with these words from Jan Richardson's Circle of Grace, Blessing of Palms. This blessing can be heard coming from a long way off. This blessing is making its steady way up the road towards you. This blessing blooms in the throats of women, springs from the hearts of men, tumbles out of the mouths of children. This blessing is stitched into the seams of the cloaks that line the road, echoed into the branches that trace the path, 
echoed in the breathing of the willing cold, the click of the donkey's hoof against the stones. Something is rising beneath this blessing. Something will try to drown it out. But this blessing cannot be turned back, cannot be made to still its voice, cannot cease to sing its praise of the one who comes along the way it makes.